Happy Friday, everyone, and welcome to an on-the-road edition of WatchGuard Security Week in Review, a video podcast dedicated to quickly summarizing the biggest information and network security stories each week and to sharing some practical security tips along the way. I'm your all-around security professional and host, Corey Nockreiner, and this is the episode for the week starting February 10th, 2014. This week I'm traveling near Windsor, uh, UK for WatchGuard, and if you haven't heard, uh, London is kind of suffering from some pretty major flooding of the Thames, which is quite horrible actually. But anyways, I'm about to catch a plane, so I need to make this episode rather quick. So let's start first with the obligatory patch day update. This week was Microsoft patch day, and Microsoft called a little audible. Last week I mentioned they were going to release five security bulletins. Instead, they released seven security bulletins, and the, the next two that were surprises were actually pretty big bulletins. The two, two surprise bulletins fixed big vulnerabilities in Internet Explorer and VB scripting, which is part Part of Windows. And these are some uh, critical vulnerabilities which attackers can leverage and drive by download, so make sure to patch those. As well as that, they fixed a number of other uh, big vulnerabilities in Windows, one being uh, one that affected Direct2D. And if you're a user of one of their security products, the one called Forefront Protection for Exchange, they fixed a remote code execution vulnerability in that. While we're talking about patches, don't forget Adobe shares Microsoft Patch Day and they released a big update for Flash Player, so get that as well. Next up is a new world record-breaking distributed denial of service attack. According to a, a distributed denial of service mitigation service called Cloudflare, this week they noticed the biggest ever distributed denial of service attack, which grew to 400 gigabits per second against an unnamed customer of theirs. Now, what's interesting about this distributed denial of service attack, you might remember back uh, uh, probably a few months ago when I mentioned the Spam House distributed denial of service attack and how it used something called DNS amplification or reflection to make the attack bigger. And this is where essentially bad guys combine spoofing, sending packets that seem to be coming from a victim IP when they're really coming from the attacker, and they take advantage of characteristics of a certain network service where sending a small packet results in a very big packet. In any case, if you combine those two things, you can cause things like DNS servers to do all the heavy lifting and generate some really big packets that are sent to your victim. In this particular attack, they really used the same amplification and reflection technique, but this time they exploited NTP, or the Network Time Protocol. There's a particular command, I think it's called mongetlist, that a very small request to an NTP server results in a very big reply that offers 600 IPs of other NTP servers, I believe. So in any case, the attackers used spoofing of a victim's IP address sending spoof UDP requests to an NTP server to cause it to send big, big replies back to a victim IP address. And this is what helped the attacker gain these big 400 gigabit per second high traffic distributed and all of service attacks. Cloudflare said they actually handled this attack. Uh, apparently there was some uh, latency in networks in Europe, but I don't think there was a news of as big outages as there were in the spam house cases. But this is probably signs of news to come that distributed denial of service attacks will continue to get bigger and bad guys will be leveraging this sort of amplification. So there's not a ton you can do about this. This really has to do with closing uh, open relay servers on the internet. Or in this case, for NTP, it might be okay that NTP servers have this particular reply. What's more important is that all the ISPs of the world come together to block spoofing. ISPs know what IPs are behind their network, so there really should be never a case where they let their users pretend to be IPs from somewhere else in the world. And there's actually all kinds of internet uh, engineering task force uh, write-ups talking about how ISPs can block spoofing. So this is really something ISPs should tackle for us. In some additional DOS-related news, there's been reports this week of Bitcoin wallets being DDoS. Two in particular, MT Gox and I believe Bitstamp, have been reporting a particular attack where the attacker 
essentially creates fake Bitcoin transaction receipts. Now the good news is the cryptography platform Bitcoin offers makes sure that these fake transaction receipts don't really result in uh, any customers losing money. However, by sending a large amount of these receipts, they're causing these wallet systems to basically be overloaded. And in some cases, Bitstamp and other wallets have had to go down for a while because of these DDoS attacks. So anyways, just another interesting story about new types of DDoS attacks. So let's finish up with details on the latest advanced persistent threat campaign. Last week I mentioned Kaspersky had alluded to a new campaign called The Mask, and this week they released some more details about this campaign at a security conference, and it turns out it's quite an advanced campaign. So to give you some of the bare details, Mask started back in 2007, according to Kaspersky, one of our partners, Research. And this particular attack campaign seemed to uh, gain access to computers in 31 countries, but it primarily seemed to target Morocco and Brazil. And it seemed to be written by some uh, Spanish-speaking uh, authors. The malware used by this campaign is very, very advanced. For instance, it does infect Windows, Linux, and Macintosh systems, so it's very cross-platform. Other interesting things is it is both 32-bit and 64-bit compatible and uh, they also have a boot kit which again allows it to even if the bad uh, good guy finds it and tries to delete it it can reinstall itself when you reboot your computer and it has really deep root kit capabilities to help it hide from uh, your computer itself and from security products on your computer. One other interesting nugget is this particular malware even took advantage of an old flaw in Kaspersky's own products. One of their old antivirus clients had a flaw that allowed people to gain remote access and this particular attack campaign actually leveraged it, which is what brought it to Kaspersky's attention in the first place. Other interesting bits of information is it seems to have other modules that uh, uh, suggest that it can affect Android and maybe even iOS devices in some cases as well. So a very, very advanced campaign. Now it seems to target the, the normal uh, types of entities that nation states would target, things like government agencies, activist type people, uh, big private businesses and critical infrastructure. Kaspersky also mentioned that when it does infect a, a computer, it really is about stealing all the information that it can. It's going to start uh, key logging your computer, it might start checking out your Skype conversations and looking for your encryption keys. In any case, a very interesting campaign. Uh, Kaspersky released a great report on it, which I'll link to in the blog, so if you're interested in more details, be sure to go check that out. Well, that's all I have time for this week. I hope you found this update useful. Now, I need to go run off to the plane, but if you'd like links to other stories, be sure to check the reference section associated with the blog post for this video. And while you're at it, be sure to check out our blog. For instance, from Microsoft Patch Day, I released a bunch of detailed alerts talking about the Microsoft and Adobe uh, updates and, and where to find them and so on, so you can see that as well. As always, you can also follow me on Twitter, or you can follow WatchGuard at WatchGuard Tech. Thank you for watching, and here at WatchGuard, we're rooting for you.